So for many years I've been working on this disease, thoracic aortic aneurysms involving the root and ascending aorta. Um, progressively enlarge over time. They tend to be asymptomatic. Many people don't know they have a risk for aortic dissection until the dissection actually occurs. And one of the reasons that I work on this disease is because um, those acute aortic dissections are best data right now, it says almost half the people that have a dissection don't make it to the hospital and die of um, mostly pericardial tamponade. Even if they make it to the hospital, it's a surgical emergency and there's a death rate associated with uh, that surgical repair. But if we can figure out who's at risk and um, we can follow the aneurysms and then go in and repair the aorta in a timely manner to prevent the acute type A dissections. And then I just want to give you an example how we can use this data for precision medicine, and sometimes that can be very aggressive management. Here's a, a, um, this mother here with their daughter shown here. Um, this family uh, has a PRKG1 mutation, like I said, the most overall, the most earliest onset of disease. Um, the mother had lost her husband to type A dissection at 35, her eldest son at 23. Um, we found the gene and reported it back, and um, both these children, including this daughter there, had the PRKG1 mutation. So this um, son here was being imaged very routinely. And what we know about PRKG1 is that they have type A dissections with no or minimal enlargement of the aorta. He had an aortic um, root, I mean, an aortic root of 3.2 centimeters at the age of 19, and three months later, he died of dissection. And so the question came up, what do we do with the 17-year-old? And she actually had a four centimeter aorta. So the decision was made to go in and repair her. Number one, I don't show it here, but there's no sex difference with this particular gene, so we can't delay it based on that. We don't have a really good marker, and if we did, she was already showing enlargement. In terms of clinical recommendations, all patients with thoracic aortic disease, and these are straight out of the guidelines that, that were published in the fall, they should be informed about the risk to family members. We're recommending genetic testing in anybody that has those morphinoid, has aortic disease, but has those morphinoid or LDS features. If there's a family history of the disease, remember, you could be that you're, you're seeing somebody in your clinic that wants to get pregnant and their father died of dissection and she has a normal aorta, not, let's say the father had a dissection and survived and she has a normal aorta. You want to go after the father, not her, and find it, see if the father has a mutation or not. But rem one really important factor in genetic testing is we don't know all the genes. We can only solve about 40% of the families, and so we still have a way to go. Um, and um, the, those individuals, we recommend genetic testing in aor uh, patients with aortic dissection under 60, and once the gene and the variant is known, we recommend gene-based management for that individual in terms of what other vascular disease you're looking for and how frequently to image for that, when to do the surgical repair, and so on.